of all. Uh, well, the factions ensure a greater indeed. degree of discipline. There's lots of downsides, right. as you say, but yeah, there's upsides. They, they ensure a better degree of discipline, also a better degree of balance. You know, uh, well, I, uh, pragmatism, yeah. idealism. You know, those all right, things. All right. I don't want to jump on some. Let's join Christina on the greatness of factions discussion now. I think the factions have, in large respects, lost their way on an ideological front. We're, we're, we're going down into the weeds. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, fine. I, I tend to agree with you. Coy Bernardi uh, is not correct. I don't see a Trump-like figure arising in Australian politics. So At least not in a major party. No, and, and you know, Coy Bernardi, he's no cheerleader, as he told us this morning, for Donald Trump. Do you think Coy like, Bernardi is still considering... You know, joining family first in South Australia after what's happened. I reckon he's probably thinking he's a better chance at running for Secretary General of the UN at the moment. <laughs> we'll see. We shall see. All right. Well, should we bring in our guest, uh, having spoken about him now and you know, in front of him, literally, yeah. uh, for the last. Let's bring few him minutes. in, Anthony Albanese. Thanks Good for joining company. us. Uh, good to be with you. I'm, I'm glad to interrupt your little um, tiff there. All right. Let's, oh, not let, a tiff at all. Let's move into some serious policy issues. It sounds like it's highly unlikely that the Labor Party are going to support the government's refugee legislation that Peter Dutton has talked about during the week. I know you haven't seen the legislation yet and you'll want to. I know that you'll want to have the relevant meetings to work out a formal party position, but can I assume correctly that your predisposition is one of absolutely not wanting to support legislation that looks like that? Well, I think if the government was serious about getting this legislation through, uh, they would have shown not just us, but shown the Australian people. Instead, what we've had is a rather bizarre uh, press conference being held and then uh, Peter Dutton changing his mind, Susan Lay having a different position from Peter Dutton about whether it applied to people who are here in Australia right now, and no explanation given of the logic of if someone has been found to be a refugee, they settle and become a citizen in another country, what the point is of saying you can't come to Australia in 40 years' time? Uh, beyond uh, just appearing to be harsh against refugees, uh, what is the point of that legislation? Well, just on when... that, can, can I ask a follow-up question on that? I mean, I, look, don't get me wrong, I, for the life of me, can't work it out either, but... The government, there, there seems to be this suggestion that it's somehow connected uh, to a looming third country arrangement or with a group of third countries that they could therefore get people out of detention on Nauru and Manus or out of at least being confined to Nauru even if they're not actually in detention specifically. There does seem to be that suggestion, Anthony Albanese, that it's somehow linked to that. As I say, I can't see quite how. But is Labor open to it if you can be persuaded that doing this hand in glove with finding third party arrangements to ensure people get off Nauru, is Labor then open to it? Well this seems to be an after the fact excuse uh, without any substance to it. Uh, it is certainly the case that we need to get people off Manus and Nauru. Indefinite detention causes mental anguish for those people involved and if you've been found to be a genuine refugee and you're subject to this ongoing mental torture about where you will go, what will happen to your life, then that is unacceptable and the government needs to find third countries of settlement. But John Key, the New Zealand Prime Minister, seemed to blow that argument out of the water when he said that uh, such a provision would rule out New Zealand, for example, of accepting uh, asylum seekers, even though in the past they have offered to accept genuine refugees, uh, a number, uh, each year uh, from Manus and Nauru because he wouldn't want to create uh, dual citizens rights if you like, second class citizens as New Zealanders. So that appears to uh, put that argument uh, to bed. But the government needs to put forward an explanation. What is its plan to get people off Manus and Nauru? What is the purpose of this legislation? We went through an election campaign where they said it was all fixed. They'd solved all the problems, they had the policy settings right, and now just a couple of months later they say, well, actually, we don't have the policy settings right, we need this major change, without any explanation of why. All right, Anthony Albanese, we'll wait to see that legislation. I want to turn to Hazelwood, uh, the power station there. You're the Shadow Minister for Regional Development. You're the government has, in response to this news today, that the uh, 
power station will close in March 2017. They've announced a uh, $43 million uh, package and to pledge to work in partnership with the Victorian government. I realize this has just been announced, but do you have any uh, initial reactions to the package? Does it go far enough? What else would you like to see done to support the people of the Latrobe Valley? Well, it's a pity that uh, they cut back on the funding that had been made available for, by the former Labor government about economic diversification that was required in the Latrobe Valley. It's uh, been no secret that uh, Hazelwood uh, would reach a, a point whereby it would be closed at some time. And what we did in government was put in place transition measures to provide, provide support to those workers and their families. And uh, my thoughts are with those workers today, many of whom have worked at that plant for decades and who uh, the economic restructuring that is occurring is certainly at no fault of, uh, of them or their families. And the government needs to work with the Victorian state government to make sure that uh, those workers and their families have a future uh, that the Latrobe Valley also uh, has a future in terms of I wouldn't want to see a uh, depopulation occur uh, from the towns around uh, the Hazelwood plant. And uh, we will be constructive about that. But it is a pity that part of the cuts that occurred in 2014 were for the very measures uh, that uh, make more sense to put in place early than to wait for the closure announcement in order to put those measures in place. So, for example, the $20 million they're committing for a regional jobs and investment package or the $20 million they're committing for local infrastructure, you're saying that's less than what was previously on offer? Well, I'm saying that the, the cut was in the order of uh, $9.6 million that they cut in 2014. I'm saying the problem is that uh, the sooner you invest to create that diversification, uh, the better it would have been. They put left some of the measures uh, in place in terms of uh, road upgrades and other, other measures that were there. But we need a comprehensive plan to make sure that uh, these workers and their families are looked after. If people are just made uh, unemployed, it of course is bad for the individuals, but it's also bad for the economy. And uh, that's why uh, the government needs to be strategic about it. We will be constructive in our approach because our thoughts are with uh, these families. Let me turn to the Senate. Uh, should uh, Senator Bob Day and Senator Rod Culleton refrain from bo voting on any legislation next week? Uh, well, Bob Day is... Uh, oh, sorry, Bob Day's resigned. My very apologies. Much a, yeah, Rod a case in point. He, yeah, he's, he's gone. He's resigned. My apologies. Uh, but, should, should Rod uh, not, Culleton... Not too soon. Well, it's not surprising you're confused, Christina, because yeah, yeah, he went, it, he came back and he went again. I know. My so, apologies. So it's no wonder. I think the Australian public are confused and they're also, I think, pretty angry that uh, it's come out that the details about mm. uh, his uh, electorate office uh, were known to the government way back in 2014. The government has to come clean about what they knew. I find it unbelievable, frankly, that uh, a senator or a member of the House of Representatives, for that matter, would set up an office in a building that they had an interest in. And the fact that the government knew that, that there's an email trail, uh, that has been uh, released uh, today by uh, Senator Don Farrell is, uh, is quite uh, beyond know, belief, really. Anthony Albanese, and do we know that the government did know that? Because yesterday the report seemed to be that they specifically requested that he divest that interest and the government is claiming that they were unaware of the way that it had been done. But they knew that it was there from the beginning. I mean, how, how on earth... Do you say, oh, well, you're going to, you've got this building that you're moving into, not moving into an office that was purpose built, uh, that Don Farrell was using, or the Commonwealth parliamentary offices that are there in Adelaide, perfectly good facilities. Uh, you say, oh, well, um, can you just uh, maybe divest uh, your interest? And it's pretty clear that that was done in a rather extraordinary way. And at the same time, this is a bloke who was consistently voting with the government. Mm. And now we have a One Nation senator uh, who clearly should not be voting because there is an absolute cloud 
over his eligibility as well. This is a guy who did plead guilty to a charge uh, that uh, would uh, make his position, I think, quite untenable. It's a decision, of course, for the High Court at the end of the day to, uh, to determine that. But this comes on the last sitting day. We had essentially a, a cage match between uh, Tony Abbott and Malcolm Turnbull on the floor of the House of Representatives. I mean, we have absolute chaos when it comes to uh, the normal functioning of a government. And they kept telling us that it was a majority government that would be able to function smoothly. Well, it's anything but that. It's chaos and, uh, and, and disorder uh, across the House of Representatives and in the Senate. Well, you, you say that Rod Cullerton shouldn't vote uh, next week on any legislation. You know, should the government delay its plebiscite legislation? Should it delay the ABCC legislation? And if so, what should the Senate do next week? Well, I'll tell you what, this is a government... It wouldn't be the first time that the Senate had nothing to do. We've already seen it shut down uh, once this term because it literally ran out of business. And having nothing to do and shutting down was better than the uh, performances of... Uh, Bridget McKenzie and others to try and filibuster who were incapable of uh, giving, a, giving a speech uh, without forgetting their own candidates' names. Uh, I find uh, this dysfunction uh, quite extraordinary. You have uh, Tony Abbott this week uh, placing an ad through Kate McGregor on the front page of the Daily Telegraph to be Aboriginal Affairs Minister. Uh, this is uh, quite dysfunctional. Malcolm Turnbull is not in charge of his government or his party. And indeed, uh, the government uh, in my portfolio seems to be all over the shop uh, as well. Mm. Things not mm. uh, being rolled out. You have a $3 billion underspend in infrastructure at a time where the government said infrastructure was going to be its big priority. Well, the money's in the budget. They're not actually doing anything with it. And uh, you find, I think, right across uh, the issues of Medicare, you have ongoing issues with health and, and, and privatisation by stealth effectively, a refusal to uh, deal with the issue of the freezing of Medicare rebates. On education, it's unclear what's happening with uh, school education funding in the forward years. All right. Um, right across the board, this is a government that uh, two months in has completely uh, fallen apart. All right, let, let's, speaking of dysfunction, though, what's going on in the Labor left, Anthony Albanese? Your colleague, Terry Butler, she described Victorian Labor uh, Member of Parliament Gavin Marshall as, quote, a little-known senator. You slapped him down yourself uh, for suggesting that he would work to unseat Andrew Giles, uh, possibly even Catherine King. What's going on? What Don't are the shenanigans at play? Oh, look, from time to time... Uh, people will be uh, upset with uh, processes and they'll make comments. Uh, Gavin Marshall did that about Catherine King, Jenny Macklin and uh, Andrew Giles. I think that uh, those comments have been treated uh, justifiably across the spectrum of the Labor Party as uh, not being worthy uh, of, uh, of a senator. Uh, Terry Butler is uh, performing extremely well. Uh, she'll be a, a future a senior minister in a Labor government. And one of the things that I'm very enthused about is the, the new generation, uh, Terry Butler, Andrew Giles amongst them, as well as people like uh, Tim Watts, well, another one. Claire O'Neill. Um, there are so many people who've come into the parliament and are outstanding. People right. like Jim Chalmers is in his second term. Uh, he's already... Uh, shadow finance minister. Well, another one, Anthony Albanese, another one, uh, would you put down in the same category as a sort of young person on the rise? What about Kimberly Kitching uh, taking over from Stephen Conroy? Well, I, uh, I don't know Kimberly Kitching. Uh, people have uh, some strong views about her. And as I've said, uh, that was a matter for uh, the Victorian branch. Uh, the people who I do know, particularly in the House of Representatives, uh, who've come in, uh, it was the best set of first speeches okay, okay, that but, but I've Mr. seen. Mr Albanese, let me take you back, though, to Kimberley Kitching, because we were talking earlier about sort of tainted votes and whether or not uh, the One Nation senator out of WA should be voting or not, and we talked about, you know, Bob Day before that. What about the fact that Kimberley Kitching has uh, had matters from the Royal Commission referred 
to police for investigation. Does that taint her vote? Well, I'm sure that the Victorian branch considered all those factors when they determined uh, to put her forward uh, for the Senate. Uh, she'll be taking up her spot. Uh, where I am in the House of Reps, I'm quite excited uh, by the people who've come in, including uh, from, uh, from Victoria, but right across the country. The new team of WA, where we have uh, essentially every single one of them is new, five newbies, uh, are absolutely outstanding. Uh, Tim Hammond has already uh, found himself on the front bench, uh, but people like Josh Wilson and Anne Arley and uh, the whole team are very, very good. All right, Anthony Albanese, we're going to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us and To The Point. Thank good you. to be with you. All right.